देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजिक टीज नंबर वन इन सिंगापुर का मैं लंबा सके निवासी मेरा नाम प्रेम चंद्रा है देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजिक टू को मेरा सलाम मेंजी में देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजिक टू रेडियो फिजिक टू में देश की धड़कन मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगता है रेडियो फिजिक टू इज नंबर वन इन सिंगापुर का मेंजी में मेरा धड़कन है रेडियो फिजिक टू हम ननुपुर के लिए रहता है और हम रेडियो फिजिक टू हरदम सुनता है हमें रेडियो फिजिक टू सुनो बहुत अच्छा लगे आप भी रेडियो फिजिक टू सुनो देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजिक टू This bulletin police officer appears in court for allegedly raping his stepdaughter. Mahendra Chaudhry's lawyer files for no case to answer. And Asia and Pacific exhibitors converge for Trade Pacifica 2014 in Suva. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. A 42-year-old Nandi police officer has been charged for raping his stepdaughter and has been remanded in custody by the Nandi Magistrates Court today. The suspect, who is a border police officer at Nandi International Airport, faces one count of rape and one count of indecent assault. The victim, who is believed to be 18 years old, was allegedly raped between January and March this year. The case has been transferred to the Lautoka High Court and will be called on April 16th. Three people are in police custody following the seizure of another parcel containing alleged illicit drugs in Nandi overnight. A 43-year-old barman was arrested at the Nandi International Airport yesterday whilst collecting a parcel from the customs office. Akusi Tatale has more. The parcel which contains some baby items was sent from Burundi in Central Africa. It was intercepted by customs officers on the 26th of last month where investigations were conducted and tests found substances believed to be illicit drugs. Police were also alerted of the incident. At this point in time, we are trying to carry out uh, further tests uh, where we will be able to um, confirm uh, what exactly were the illicit drugs, but uh, customs officials have done their initial tests, uh, but as the usual process, then uh, it's handed over to police and then we conduct further tests. The suspect went to pick the parcel yesterday but was arrested by police and upon questioning the accused told the officers that he was picking up the parcel on behalf of a foreign national living in a holiday apartment in Nandi. A search was conducted at the apartment last night where a 67-year-old foreign national and a 33-year-old woman was arrested. All suspects are in custody as investigations continue. Further tests are also being carried out to determine the type of drug discovered. Police are also trying to establish how long the foreign national has been living in the country. At the same time, verify how and why locals were again involved in this drug bust. We cannot rule out the, uh, um, the existence of hard drugs in Fiji. Um, and that's something that we are working very hard with other stakeholders to get to the bottom of uh, and ensure that we also weed out the problem altogether because um, we've made our stand. We're very uh, firm on the issue of uh, drugs circulating in uh, Fiji. The public have been reminded that hefty penalties will be imposed on anyone found to be involved in such illegal activities. Under the Illicit Drugs Control Act 2004, Any person who without lawful authority imports or exports an illicit drug commits an offense is liable upon conviction to a fine not exceeding $1 million dollars or to imprisonment for life or both. Those found guilty of conspiring with another to commit offenses under the act could face a fine of up to $500,000 dollars or an imprisonment term of 14 years. Akusita Tale, FBC News. The Commonwealth has welcomed recent developments in Fiji and says it remains willing to offer any technical expertise needed to assist the conduct of the 2014 elections in September. Commonwealth Secretary General Kamala Sharma welcomed the announcement that elections will be on September 17th. He noted the gazetting of the electoral decree and the appointment of a supervisor of elections. Sharma welcomed the provisions of the relevant decrees that seek to create an enabling environment for the free and fair conduct of elections on a level playing field. He reiterated the importance of the Commonwealth values of human rights, the rule of law and fundamental freedoms, including freedom of the media, freedom of expression, association and assembly. 
About 100 exhibitors from Asia and the Pacific, including Fiji, are convening in Suva for the largest trade exhibition called Trade Pacifica 2014. The focus of this year's exhibition is agriculture, aquaculture and tourism, with special themes on women in business and youth in entrepreneurship. Mika Longa checked out the displays at the Vodafone Arena. After months of preparation that involved logistical arrangements covering the region, the trade exhibition was officially launched last night. It's something that must go on. It cannot be one of those regional initiatives that uh, we only see a couple of years of it and then it fades away. Your Excellencies. Sayed Kayum has stressed the importance of recognizing the different comparative advantages that individual nations have, an issue Pacific countries must take heed of. Fiji, as an advocate of regional integration through trade, its permanent secretary for trade, Shain Ali, says Pacific trade is still slow and impeded amongst our region, thus are facing unique challenge in terms of participating in international trade. There's a need for Pacific businesses and traders to come under one roof, such as Trade Pacifica, create business linkages and synergies. This is the result of nine months of work by the organizers of Trade Pacifica, who have vowed to make the event even bigger with interim activities until 2016. In future, uh, what is uh, for Trade Pacifica? Um, we believe that it's going to be bigger. Uh, it, it's, it's just going to grow. The exhibitors here have a common goal to find new partners, investors and clients and also test the marketability of their products both in the Pacific and overseas. With our little business we are targeting the, the standard of internationally. My main aim of, uh, aim of uh, participating at this work uh, exhibit is to talk to as many consumers as I can. There's been uh, quite uh, some people coming down and uh, looking at and seeing uh, our products. And we are pleased to be Trade Pacifica's gold sponsor ANZ says the bank's participation is indicative of its role in trade and investment development across 33 countries in the Asia Pacific region, Australia, New Zealand, Europe and America. Trade Pacifica aligns perfectly with our Pacific priorities. In the Pacific we are a bank that follows trade and investment flows across 33 countries. Fiji, meanwhile, has increased its trade from zero in 2000 to 10 percent in 2013. Its exports to Pacific Islands combined is larger than Australia. Mikolonga, FBC News. Coming up next, Reserve Bank of Fiji transfers 2013 profit to government. Today FM is number one here in Singapore. We are today FM in Lampasa. It's rock! My favorite station in Nandi is Today FM. Like, uh, listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks in Suba. Lodoka City love today's kid music. I love Today FM because they play all my songs. We love Today FM at Vunivar Lampasa. Yeah, it rocks! I love Today FM because it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Welcome back. This is FBC News. An application has been made to the Suva High Court by Labour Party leader Mahendra Pal Chaudhry's lawyer, QC Peter Border, for a no case to answer. The application was made after prosecution closed its case this morning and called up only one witness, the board secretary of the Reserve Bank of Fiji, Sabrina Hanif. Chanel Sivan is following the trial. New developments in court today, as Chaudhry's lawyers told Judge Justice Paul Madigan, that there is no case to answer as prosecution had only brought in one witness and did not prove that his client has foreign currency, which he did not declare. Justice Madigan reminded Chaudhry's lawyer that prosecution had already proved in the High Court and the court had agreed to the facts that Chaudhry had received funds overseas. The agreed facts in this case is that Chaudhry has already made foreign investments in Australia with money he received from the Indian government via donations from the public there. The sum received was Australian $1.5 million or around $3 million Fijian dollars. It's also agreed this money was given to him in form of donation to settle his family in Australia after political instability of 2000 in Fiji. Chaudhry then moved back to Fiji and did not bring this money to Fiji. 
Under the Exchange Control Act, Fiji residents must bring money kept overseas to Fiji and must keep those funds in an institution authorized by the Reserve Bank of Fiji. The agreed fact states that Chaudhry failed to do this and went on to extend his investment abroad in five different banks in Australia and New Zealand. These banks were Commonwealth Bank of Australia, the Commonwealth Management Investment Limited, the ANZ Bank New Zealand, Perpetual Investments, Australia and Colonial First State Income Fund account with Colonial First State Investments in Australia. According to the agreed facts in courts, none of these institutions were authorised. In terms of the Exchange Control Act, the witness uh, Sabrina Hanif told the court any Fiji resident who wishes to open an account overseas needs to seek the approval of the Reserve Bank of Fiji. She says Chaudhry did not get the approval of the Reserve Bank of Fiji. The case continues tomorrow in the Suva High Court. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. A 73-year-old man is the country's latest road accident victim. The man was traveling in a vehicle with five others when it went off the road at Tangitang in Tavo last night. Police spokesperson Ananai Soro says the driver and two other passengers are still admitted at the Latoka Hospital, while two others have been treated and sent home. Right now we have not uh, gone to the extent of um, questioning the driver at least because he's still admitted in hospital until health authorities will give us the go-ahead or the approval uh, or the green light to question him, then we will do so. So at this stage uh, we're just awaiting the post-mortem results. The road death toll stands at 14, two more compared to the same period last year. A 30-year-old man charged for causing death by dangerous driving has been released on strict bail conditions by the Nandi Magistrates Court. Anuresh Mani appeared in court today and was released on a $2,000 bail with sureties. Mani has been placed on a travel ban and has been told to surrender his passport within 14 days. He is accused of causing the death of 26-year-old Ashmita Singh, who died in a fatal road accident at Waimalika on Saturday. The Reserve Bank of Fiji transferred $39.9 million to the Fijian government today. This compromised this comprised sorry, of its total profit of $31.9 million for the financial year ending 31st December 2013 and $8 million representing one-fifth of the balance of the revaluation re reserves account as per RBF Act. Governor and Chairman of the Board Barry Whiteside says the amount is higher than last year prior to 2012 where they made $35.4 million. Whiteside says this indicates the improved profit achieved in a challenging global environment as the returns on foreign reserves. He adds the outcome they achieved is a combination of high income as well as containing expenditure in 2013. We turn to sports now and welcome back, Jamie. What's the latest? Good evening. Coming up, Fiji's seventh side return home with the Tokyo seventh title and a long list of injuries and Oceania football's Auckland City wary of island teams. Details after the break. FM Bula Bula FM number 2 and ser Welcome back first up tonight lots of lessons learned and injuries to take care of but first some well deserved rest for the Vodafone Fiji 7 team which touched down in Nandi from Hong Kong today Winning in Tokyo was a delight, but the loss in Hong Kong is what Ben Ryan and his men will rue with only two tournaments left in the RB series this season. Elena McDonald has more. There's a lot to mull over from this last trip. Happy with that to beat New Zealand for the third time in succession. Um, starts to get them a bit more worried, which is always a good thing. And then going into Hong Kong, I saw the boys were pretty tired. Um, all the teams were tired. You can see how hard it is to back up tournaments when you look at a team like South Africa, a full-time squad. Um, you know, they have over six, uh, seven and a half million Fiji in a year they spend on their budget. Um, yet they still were very tired going into Hong Kong and lost. Being denied the Hong Kong title is a memory that's still hurting. England tried to stifle our defence by being very passive. 
um, and just watching and letting us do things and uh, not giving us any opportunity. And we need to be direct at times, occasionally take a bit more rucks and breakdowns so that we can, uh, we can start to line break. And the boys will learn from that very quick. Sevens wizard Waisalesa Revy's presence is one Ryan wants to include in the future. Uh, nobody else in the IB series speaks Fijian, so at half time, if we can get our point across in Fijian, while all the analysts are, are listening to our half time talks, it just means that we don't give our game away. And I'll look back at those and make sure we got the right message across that what Waisali said was interpreted correctly. With Scotland up next, though, a lot of mending is in store for core reps. Asio Rantabuli um, had a hand injury that stopped him playing in the last couple of games. Uh, we've had Pio's got a bit of a rib injury that he needs to uh, look after. Um, a couple of knee injuries. Amosi Mulavuro, as you know, you can see, didn't play that much in Hong Kong and he had a knee injury from the first game against Wales. Uh, we also had Benito Masialevu had a couple of knocks. Uh, up beside Domalailai was knocked out on the last day and second day. While it's rest time for some, the National Extended Squad will be back in camp come Monday. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. The organisers of the 2014 Fiji Bitter Nawaka Sevens are now in the process of tying up loose ends for the start of the competition on Friday week. Tagged as one of the biggest and most successful local tournaments, the Nawaka Sevens is set to feature the country's top clubs. Defending champions Tokotoka Westfield Dragons have already confirmed a well-prepared team for the tournament. I've been corresponding on uh, almost on a daily basis with our defending champions. Uh, the Tokotoka Westfield Dragons, uh, formerly known as the Tokotoka Westfield Barbarians. And um, this, uh, uh, they've, update, they've been updating me on a daily basis. Eh? They've had uh, eight of their boys that played in the Hong Kong dance tournament. And uh, for the Dragons team, which, which uh, went on to win the dance competition, they had eight of their boys playing in that competition. Um, a few of them in the winning team and... Uh, and also in the losing final, uh, finalist. Huh? So they've been doing pretty well. Their preparation has been going on very well. The tournament will be played at Prince Charles Park in Nandi. Holders of the OFC Champions League football competition, Auckland City, say it will be the island teams to watch out for during the group stages of the competition. The games start in Bay and Lautoka next week, with Auckland City, City being the top bets to retain this year's title. The city coaching staff say the island teams bring a different brand of football when they play in the Pacific region. Well, I think I think the preparation is the uh, the basic point of view, is it, uh, the basic starting point. You know, as I said before, uh, when you play up in the islands, a lot of things change. Uh, the island teams play a little bit better because uh, they're, they're a little bit like that. When they play at home, they feel like released. I don't know. I don't know how to explain. They probably yeah, can yeah. explain it better than me. But when they play at home, they 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 play. They can be very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, they're technically fantastic. They play in their own uh, conditions, so the mm. surfaces are different, you know, than what we have here in New Zealand. Cities pooled with Vodafone Nandi, Amikal from Vanuatu, and Tahiti's AS Dragon. More than Lakemba One cricket teams have been going head to head in the Lao Conference Easter qualifiers today at Albert Park in Suva. Both teams have six points each, but it's Mode who is standing tall with a better net run rate at 8.4, followed by Lakemba, who has a 5.51 net run rate, while Como is in third position. Earlier today, Mode defeated Onyata by nine wickets, while Lakemba won outclassed Como by four wickets. Games continue tomorrow with Onoilao meeting Onyata and Como playing Lakemba too. That was your sports for tonight. It's back to Jackie now with business. Digicel Group has entered into a conditional sale agreement to purchase Telecom New Zealand's 60% shareholding in Telecom Cook Islands Limited. Digicel Group Chief Executive Com Delve says if the conditions of sale are concluded before 31st May, they will acquire Telecom New Zealand's interest in the incumbent telecommunications provider in the Cook Islands. The other 40% is owned by the government of the Cook Islands. Currently, Digicel Group has operations in 32 markets, including six Pacific Island markets, as well as a thriving business in Australia and New Zealand.
Well, the time now when I'm sure you're going to tell us we had a mixed bag today, Jin. Glad to know you've been paying attention all this time, Jackie. Yes, we did have a mixed bag today. Sunny conditions in the morning for most centers, with cloudy conditions taking over in the afternoon. The capital was the only center to have both clouds and showers today. Suva joined Savu Savu with the lowest temperature. Both centers are on 29 degrees Celsius. 30 was the popular number in the Western Division, while Ambassa is still the warmest on 33. It's around 31 degrees Celsius for our friends in Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea, and 24 degrees Celsius for Port Vila, Vanuatu. Looking at tomorrow's weather, it's another mixed bag to look forward to, so do take that umbrella along just in case. For Mariners, southeast winds will be at 15 to 20 knots for Kandavu and Vatuira passages with moderate to rough seas. Finally, for our photo, I've got Wainimala River behind me, and right now, I feel like wearing a life jacket. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. A quick recap of our headlines today. Police officer appears in court for allegedly raping his stepdaughter. Mahendra Chaudhry's lawyer files for no case to answer, and Asia and Pacific exhibitors converge for Trade Pacifica 2014 in Suva. This week's poll question, we're asking... Should women form their own political party to contest the September 17th elections? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That's FBC News for tonight. See you again tomorrow. Mirchi FM is number one in Singapore. And who is our true friend? Mirchi FM is our number one. I love Mirchi FM. It's so hot. Look, I eat it all and eat it all. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mirchi FM is hot. Here at Rugby Town, Singapore, I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is number one in Suva. It's hot. We live in the long run. 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 Mirchi FM, bon chulum chulum. Mirchi FM, it's hot.